Hey everyone, welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video we will create the classic HDR look and turn this shot into this one. This basically means we are going to restore a lot of details, especially from the darkest parts. But we also will give this shot a lot more colors in the foreground and in the sky. And finally, maybe we will add some nice glow effect overall. So let's just begin with the editing. Here we are in the camera raw editor. As you can see in the bottom part, you, I have two images opened up. This one is my base image and then I covered the sun with my finger just to prevent those lens flares and get a cleaner looking image. I'm going to combine both of these images later in Photoshop, but first let's do the raw adjustments. So let me change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This will help with the shadows, but also add some more base saturation to this image. Now in the basic tab, I'm not going to change the white balance. I think it looks pretty good this way. However, I'd like to bring up the exposure and I'm raising it quite a bit. Of course, this will give us some overexposure, especially in the sky. So let's just bring down the highlights to prevent that. Of course, you can completely prevent the overexposure because the sun is super bright, but that looks pretty good. Then we can further boost the shadows to bring back details from the foreground. Just like that. And I'm also going to push up the whites a little bit. All right. And let me drop the blacks. This helps set some contrast, but if we want to further boost the contrast, I can simply use the slider. So let's bring it up a notch. That's looking pretty good. Okay, now you can maybe already see the classic HDR look, which I'm talking about. However, I don't want to make it a grungy scene, but I think otherwise this look works pretty well on this shot. So next up, we want to introduce some texture just to make this image a little sharper. And then of course, let's introduce some vibrance for stronger colors. So that's the image after our base adjustments we can compare to before real quick. You can see we do have a lot more details in the foreground, which looks really, really nice. And the sky looks much better as well. However, using a few masks, we can enhance that further. So let's head into the local adjustments. To make the sky a little more interesting, I'm going to use a color range mask and I'm clicking somewhere in the blue part. Now I don't have every blue area selected, so I'm just holding down the shift key in the non-selected areas and click in here once just to get them all selected just like that and i do want to refine it just to not cover too much area and then even subtract a little bit from the bottom up maybe like this and with that mask i'm going to bring down the exposure which just gives us some more contrast in the sky i think that always looks really good also, I do want to bring down the clarity, making the clouds look a little more puffy. Just like that. Perfect. Next up, I do want to work on the foreground. Again, I can use a simple color range mask and just click somewhere in the orange area. However, I'm again using a linear gradient to subtract from this mask since we do have the clouds selected up there, which we don't want. So let's do it like that. In here, I do want to push the highlights. And I also want to push the contrast. And then finally, let's push the clarity. And this will just give us a lot more detail in the foreground, making everything look a lot sharper. And also that was it for the masking. So next up, let's do a little bit of color grading. I'm starting in the color mixer with the hue. First off, I'd like to bring down the purple hue all the way. This is a very, very subtle change, but it mostly affects the blue part of the sky. And now we do have just some more richer blue tones up in here. Then I'd like to bring down the yellow hue just a little bit, giving the field in the foreground some more orange tones, maybe like this. Also, I'd like to raise the orange hue. That's looking good. Next up in the saturation tab, I am bringing down the red saturation just to be safe and don't have any weird colors in this image. I'm also going to bring down the orange tones a little bit. 
as well as the yellow tones. Okay, looking good so far. I do want to have a more vibrant sky, so let's just bring up the blue tones. Perfect. Finally, let's head into the luminance tab. Here yeah, I'm raising the orange luminance, which again would just affect the field in the foreground, making it a little brighter. And let's drop the blue luminance to make the sky darker. Perfect. Looking good so far. Finally, we can apply some split toning. I'm starting with the highlights. And since we are close to sunset, I do want to warm up the shot quite a bit. So let's go with a warm color tone for the highlights. And let's raise the saturation a lot. That's looking good. For the midtones, again, I'm using a warm color tone. Let's bring up the saturation. All right. And finally, for the shadows, I'm going to use a cold color tone with a very, very low saturation. Perfect. That's looking really, really good. Finally, in the calibration tab, and I get questions about this tab quite a lot. To be honest, I really don't know what those sliders are doing exactly. I just play around with them until I get something that looks good in most cases. And like this for sunsets, I'm going to bring down the hue, which will just make the warmer tones a little more reddish. And I'm then just bringing up the saturation. And that's all there is to it. I just think it looks a bit better this way. So once we have done this, we can finally head into the details tab to sharpen this image. And here I'm always bringing down the radius, increase the detail, add some masking, and then sharpen this image some more. And here we are done with the raw adjustments for the base image. Now you can see the lens flare is really destroying this image. And that's why I have shot the second image. Of course, we need to have the same editing settings on this one as well. So I'm going to select them both, right click on them, click on synchronize settings, make sure to check all and hit OK. So because I was covering the sun with my finger, the overall shot is a lot darker. We need to adjust that so we have the same settings on both images. That means I'm just going to bring up the exposure a little bit and maybe even the shadows. So let's compare. You can see it's pretty close together, so I think that should work fine. So with that out of the way, let's select them both again and just click Open Objects. Okay, and of course, the first thing we will do is to copy this image by hitting Ctrl A and Ctrl C over the other image. And here I'm just hitting Ctrl V. Of course, we have to get rid of this ugly hand up there. So let's just apply a layer mask. Actually, let's apply a black layer mask by holding down the Alt key and clicking the layer mask icon. Then I'm using a brush, set the foreground color to white. And then I'm just brushing over the areas where I don't want to have the lens flare effect. Actually, I'm brushing over the whole foreground. I do want to have a little bit of lens flare. Actually, let's just brush over the sun like that. Now I'm going to set the foreground color to black and make the brush a little smaller. And then I'm just getting rid of the finger. And I'm also going to add a little bit of lens flare in here. So that's looking much, much better. At this point, we can safely merge those two layers since I don't want to change them anymore. And now let's start cleaning up the shot. Therefore I'm using the spot healing brush and I can already see a sensor spot up there. Okay, looking good so far. So next up, let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to soft light. And I'm going to pick up a color tone from around the sun by holding down the Alt key and clicking in this area. I'm also going to drop the brush opacity to around 15%. And with this brush, I'm going to add some subtle glow just around the sun. That's looking good just want to make this area around this spot a little softer because without the glow it's quite harsh. Next up I'd like to dodge the foreground a bit, adding some more contrast to this image. So again, new layer. This time however we are going to use the overlay blending mode. And for dodging I'm 
as you might know, always using the TK panel plugin. With this plugin, I can simply select certain luminance ranges. In this case, I want to select everything that gets hit by the light in the field in the foreground. So that means I'm just going through all the lights masks. And let's see, that is looking pretty good. So I'm using the lights to mask, activate the layer mask mode and just add it as a layer mask to the overlay layer. And again, use the brush tool with the foreground color set to white since we want to dodge things. And I'm increasing the brush opacity. Then I'm just starting to paint over the field in the foreground. And you can see how we can create this very cool light effect here. If I want to make it stronger, I could duplicate this layer, which I think looks really, really good. Maybe let's bring down the opacity a notch, but that looks great. Then I do think I want to burn this image, especially in the sky. So let's create another layer again with the overlay blending mode. And with the TK panel plugin, I'm simply going to select color and here I'm choosing blue. Now we have a layer mask, especially selecting the blue tones of the sky. Of course, I need to set the foreground color to black since I want to make it darker. And let's lower the brush opacity to not make this too strong. Now I'm just starting to paint over the sky here. Just like that. Perfect. At this point, I am pretty much finished with the editing. I just want to add some more nick collection effects. So that means I'm going to merge all those layers. Then let's head into filter, nick collection, color effects pro 4. So first off, I'd like to apply the classical soft focus since this adds a very cool glow effect to this image. However, I'm not using this method. I do want to use the third soft focus method just because it's a little less bright. Also, I'm going to bring down the strength. I think that looks like a good spot. Let's apply it like this. Okay, I think it looks good, but I still want to create a layer mask and with the brush tool, get rid of the glow on the foreground since we want this area to be sharp. So I'm just brushing over parts of the foreground. All right, perfect. Again, I'm merging the layers and let's head into the Nick collection one more time. So at this point, some might say this will be overdone, but I do want to have a very, very colorful HDR image. So I'm using the polarization effect and just turn up the strength here. You can see this will make the whole image a lot more vibrant. At the same time, I do want to add another filter. And here I'm using the Brilliant Swamp effect, which works really good in most cases. And just bring up the warmth some more. All right, that looks great. So let's apply it like that. Okay, you can see the colors are much, much stronger now. And everything is a lot warmer. I'd like to add one more effect for just some more glow. So let's head into the Nick Collection plugin one last time. And again, I'm using the classical soft focus effect. Again, I'm changing the method. So let's take a look at the other options here. I think I'm going with the third soft focus method again. Maybe drop the strength, but that's looking really solid. So let's apply it like this. Again, I'm adding a mask and just mask out some parts in the foreground which I want to keep sharp, especially the dark side of that thing in the center. Okay, that's looking really awesome. So I hope this was an interesting tutorial. If you have any questions about editing, let me know in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.